Have you ever wondered how jazz and jazz piano actually works? I'm not speaking about uh, what scales will work to play over a specific chord, but uh, how jazz actually works. What is it all about? You know, it's nice to practice uh, all of the scales, chords, licks and tricks. Sometimes it's smart to zoom out a little bit. Well, hello. No, not this much. Uh, just enough to see this uh, image of this lesson, please. All right, thank you. So if we sometimes zoom out so that we can see the big picture of what jazz music is all about, then we'll be better prepared to understand and eventually play with more wisdom. Hence, we'll play better. In today's lesson, I'll show you something that is highly relevant, not only if you play jazz piano, but if you play any kind of music. I will show you the four core elements of music, what they are, and how you can keep them in mind at all times, and uh, of course, all the benefits from doing so. Before I do, let's thank our sponsor of this episode. are the core elements of jazz and music in general. Before I show you this, think about what music is in general. You know, there are many different definitions on what music actually is, but in my opinion, music is a way to express and communicate something through sound, silence and time. So I believe that uh, you play music to express yourself or um, you play music to communicate something to others. And this something is what could not have been said or expressed through any other medium but music. Music contains sound, silence and time. Whenever you play music, you control the sound and the absence of sound through time. And uh, all of this, of course, creates sound waves that goes through the receiver's ear and body. Now, I could go on deeper about the subject, but what is more important to know are the four core elements of music. What they are and how you can, as a jazz pianist, control the four core elements. So think about uh, all of the music that you know. I bet that uh, unless the music is very experimental, it all contains four things. There is uh, melody, there is harmony, there is rhythm and there are dynamics. So now you know about the four core elements, the melody, the harmony, the rhythm and the dynamics. And as jazz pianists, there are three things that we should do with the four core elements when we play. And these are to know about the four core elements, which you already do, to know how we can tweak the four core elements and to listen to how our fellow musicians are tweaking the four core elements as they play. You know, as I said, you already know uh, number one. Let me go over to my piano and show you how to tweak the four core elements. Let's talk about how to play the melody. You know, usually there is a melody presented uh, unless you play something uh, like free jazz. There is a melody in the tune. And uh, while you're improvising, Usually you are also improvising a new melody on the spot on the chord changes of the tune. So usually you play the melody or you play together with people. They are playing the melody like uh, if you're playing with a singer, she or he plays uh, or sings the melody. And if you play it together with a band, maybe the saxophone player is playing the melody. But there is 99% uh, of the time there is a melody presented. So what I think is crucial is to uh, know exactly how you are going to play the melody. So that means you're going to listen to how you're playing the melody or you're going to listen to how the others are playing the melody and try to respond to how they are playing the melody. But if you're playing the melody, the first thing to do if you're playing, for example, a tune from the real book is to uh, not play it as it's written. And I'm going to demonstrate uh, what I mean by that. So let me just show you now the few, a few bars of uh, the famous tune Body and Soul. And this is how to not play Body and Soul.
first thing that you should do is to stretch the melody. That's one way to tr to tweak the melody. I'm always thinking of uh, how would a vocalist sing the melody. So let me now uh, demonstrate what I mean by that. Uh, I'm going to play it a little slower, and then we're going to stretch it out in time. The next tip I want to give you is not only to stretch the melody out, is uh, to also add some more notes to it, so you can actually phrase the melody totally different than what is written. Now it's getting a little better, but we should add more chord notes. So you can do that with your right hand together with your left hand. Uh, I'm going to play some uh, simple chords now with my right hand as well as my left hand. And simultaneously, I'm going to um, uh, phrase the melody different than what's written. I'm going to phrase it more freely. The next thing we want to do is to add some uh, fills or lines to fill in the gaps when you have uh, long uh, notes in the melody, such as in bar two. It stays there for three beats. So what you can do is to add uh, a complex fill, but you don't need to do that. You, you know, you can uh, fill it out like like a line or something, but you can do it very simple and still make it interesting. I'll show you an example. Just a few more notes, right? Now I was playing... What I'm doing now is totally improvised. This is not planned. The next time I'll show you, I'll show you something else. Let me try it once more. So as long as you're listening to what you're doing and improvising, you'll sort of create the magic. Uh, and if you keep that attitude while you are also playing a real solo, it's a lot more interesting to listen to. When you are playing any kind of music, think about the way you play the harmony. You can play it spread out like this, or you can play it tight like this, or you can play it simple, like uh, simple chords, or very complex chords. That's a cluster. <laughs> anyway, uh, the point is that uh, you should always be aware of how you are playing your harmony, of course, together with the melody. So always listen to how you play the uh, harmony uh, as well. That's equally as important as how you're phrasing your melody, I would say. 
if you're playing jazz piano. And I also find that, uh, you know, just listen to a few chords. There's so much information in that particular chord that's interesting with, within itself. The first thing is that you should uh, think about the way you're phrasing your harmony. And by phrasing, I mean how you put down your chords. A lot of people, they're rolling out the chords. Which is uh, a cool effect. Before you use this effect, try to play it even like this. Another thing that you can do is to add on the offbeat the rest of the chord. So you add uh, the melody on the top and the bass note on the bottom, and then you add the rest of the chords in between. I do this a lot, and it's a great effect to use. So ideally, you should combine these, right? So now you have three things that you can do. There are a lot more. Uh, but if you just combine these, then uh, it will sound great. If I was playing this in more pop style, it will, I would play like this. You know, straightforward, just triads and octaves with my left hand. If I'm playing jazz piano, as you know, we are doing, then you can add uh, a lot more colors, and by colors I mean more notes to the chords. Of course, on the dominant seventh chords, you can add uh, as many, many colors as you'd like. And it's up to you as the jazz pianist to choose what kind of color you'd like to add to any kind of chord. So if I want to play uh, B flat seven, I can play B flat seven now with a flat nine and a sharp five, flat 13. The next thing is that we can do some um, reharmonization. And reharmonization, that means you play something different than that what uh, was written in the first place. Uh, I think that you should always look for ways to reharmonize and uh, become creative on the spots. And even if you are you know, practicing a tune, See if you can come up with new, with new ways to play that tune always. So we have something I call uh, small reharmonization or minor reharmonizations. And then you have uh, big or more advanced reharmonizations. So a small reharmonization could be like this. Now, I just changed one thing. I don't know if you noticed, but instead of playing an E flat minor seven, I was playing a dominant seven chord here instead, right? So I'm gonna play this one more time. Then the next thing that we should uh, have a look at is uh, how to do some more advanced reharmonization. And here is an endless uh, amount of opportunities. I'm gonna show you one. I've cheated a little bit because I have experimented with this uh, on my own before I uh, recorded this video. So I knew that uh, this would fit if I did like this. By the way, I have a totally different YouTube video about uh, minor 13 voicings that you can check out. And this will explain uh, how to build up these chords. But the point is, I added this because I thought that it would fit. Again, you should always look for the best version of how you can play the tune. If you do this right, you'll start to sound amazing. When it comes to the rhythm, I also find it very interesting to know what is going on around me rhythmically and what I'm playing myself rhythmically, if I'm playing uh, alone or together with others. Uh, and also, if you know a little bit about uh, what rhythm is and is not, then it's uh, interesting to uh, be able to tweak the core element rhythm. So for example, you can change, instead of playing rhythmically 
eight notes on this melody, you can change it to triplets. That's just a simple change I'm going to show you. So this is eight notes. If I want to change this to triplets, I can play like this. If I want to play this uh, a little bit more with swung eights, I could play like this. Last example here is uh, if you want to change something to something completely different, you can even change the time signature. So instead of playing this now in uh, four, like I did now, you can play it in three. So there you have it. The last of the four core elements is the dynamics. If you want to make a solo interesting, you can do that by playing very, very soft or very, very loud or vice versa. So this is a mix, right? To make it more interesting. Now, I find that uh, a lot of my students, uh, when they are starting out playing jazz piano, they are playing far too loud and they don't even notice. So be aware of how loud you are playing at all times. So how to play very loud, how to play very soft. To play very soft, you just press down the keys very slow. So if I want to play this tune, I can uh, play this uh, very soft. If I'm changing the register to play up here, it can sometimes uh, sound even softer. And the opposite. If you want to play very loud, what you can do is, of course, to press down the keys uh, quicker. In combination with uh, playing uh, big chords, it's uh, going to sound very loud. So. What I like to do is, if I'm playing a solo and if I'm playing a tune such as this one, is to add this Red Garland style. And I mentioned the Red Garland style in one of my first videos on YouTube. Check it out if you haven't. But uh, it can sound like this if I want to play this tune in this style and I'm going to play it very loud. So there you have it. Now, at the end of this very long video, I want to just mention that uh, everything is interconnected. So focus on all of these simultaneously. But in order to be able to do that, it's smart to just go in and just work on one element at a time. And then, of course, when you're playing together with people, you don't have the time to think about all of these. Uh, it will go automatically. But that's what it's all about to automate everything so that uh, when you're ready to play with uh, more people or you're ready to play more uh, professional sounding jazz piano, you know what to do. So that's it for now. If you like this video, please hit like, subscribe and share. Um, also, you can now follow me on uh, Instagram. At the end now, I will show you uh, a version of uh, Body and Soul. We've changed the melody for this. So the tune is called Soddy and Bowl. Uh, so uh, have a good one and I will see you next time. Uh, whatever you do, take care of your music and I will see you then. Bye.
Mm-hmm.